it's been a long time since I've been wanting to do this video specifically um, I think the past few five to six months since I promised to do my full guide and tutorial on how I did a weight cut without tracking food intake so in this video again I'll be discussing what I did personally on my own experience and how I managed to lose weight while maintaining some of the hard earned some of the little muscle mass that lean body mass that I gained on my um, aggressive bulk inspired by Jeffrey Verdi Schofield of course for the span in a span of six to eight months because um, what and how I did my cut I actually also did what he did but personally not in a hundred percent rate but I followed what he did some of the simple tips and tricks in which I also will be discussing with you in today's video firstly uh, use of weighing scale is a must sorry for that um, weird cut I had to pee <laughs> I can't hold it to any longer but what I mentioned is the use of weighing scale is a must um, instead of tracking your food intake as I've mentioned um, tracking your daily weight um, actually helps especially on a weekly basis and a monthly basis so it could actually help you compare um, what do you call this it helps you compare if you're going on the right path or if you're plateauing whatsoever and in my case it actually worked because my starting scale on my cutting face last year was 81 kilograms then I ended my cut my aggressive cut at 70 to 69 kilograms so there is a huge um, weight cut in the span of four to five months and most of it would be water weight I would like to tell you all that I could have wished that what I gained on my aggressive bulk for the span of six to eight months was all lean body tissue but no uh, you cannot force um, muscle gain even with the access to large surplus amounts of food and my advantage back then because I had a lot of time uh, I wasn't financially independent back then and I was getting a lot of sleep and rest so I think it was the best time so uh, don't take for granted the time that you have especially to youngsters um, going from junior to senior high school you have a lot of time on your hands you got financial support from your parents or whomever you uh, whomever you're supporting whomever individuals or parties you are being are being supported to and going back to the topic daily weight tracking is key so you will compare your weekly tracking of weight or we scaling of your weight so again it is to measure if you're actually making progress you're plateauing or you are actually going backwards again um, the next would be timing of hydration is important as you have uh, what happened earlier I actually have to pee 
for the sole reason that you should maximize your rest period in avoidance of interrupting your sleep or rest because you have to go wake up again in the middle of the night just to pee and this is the the next thing that I'll mention is where most or majority of uh, beginners um, beginners to intermediate they tend to do this mistake that they drop the strength training easily in which actually um, you're actually shooting yourself in the foot and you're actually uh, degrade, degrading yourself at a very at a very faster rate because dropping strength training um, uh, after ending your bulking phase is actually a very very big mistake because the whole sole purpose of cutting weight is to cut unnecessary weight gain that you did during your bulking phase and you're trying to maintain your strength or keep as much as possible uh, lean body tissue and some of your strength although strength is actually not the sole purpose of your cutting phase so expect a lot of um, drop in performance especially in pushing movements although the uh, what do you call this the return if you actually manage to cut down in weight is you actually be stronger stronger ironically in your calisthenics movement is most especially in doing pull-ups um, doing dips you can actually crank out as much as reps as you can because of course you're lighter and your relative strength to your body weight is the um, the equalizer that is because of you cutting weight so at the start of your cutting phase you know I'm pretty sure if you're keeping track of your um, strength records you have a log book whether it could be written on a notebook in a pen or on your phone use it as a guide and then just slowly gradually expect that your one to three rep max on the big lifts would slowly degrade um, in terms of weight so if you have a 315 for your bench press on your peak bulk expect that every week you lose a weight you'd probably lose 10 to 15 to 20 percent of your one to three percent of your one rep max and that's okay again the whole purpose of cutting weight is to um, maintain and keep your strength and lean body mass as much as possible and your body will thank you thank you for it at the end of your cutting phase because you have managed to um, maintain <coughs> excuse me you have made to me you have you have successfully maintained and kept some of your lean body gains lean muscle gains and you have managed to prevent the um, what they call this the cannibalism in which your own muscle is striving to eat their own um, muscle cells if what I'm saying is correct correct me if I'm wrong in the comments down below be actually a personal uh, personal tip that I will share to you and it, and it's that you prioritize ab isolation meaning you should target and prioritize your ab muscles the beach muscles the mirror muscles in which it would include not only the six pack it would include the serratus the obliques the uh, shark gill action as you can see here these are the serratus and 
oblique muscles because uh, bodybuilding, as I have mentioned so many times before on this channel, that bodybuilding is all about the game of illusion. You may, if you or if you haven't known, every time you actually do a cut, you're actually smaller uh, on clothes. But when you're shirtless, when you're on stage, you actually look bigger compared to when you are in bulk. Because when you're in bulk, yeah, you sure you may look bigger on clothes, but if you go shirtless, you actually look soft and pudgy. And when you ask actually prioritize and isolate your ab muscles more uh, it would include also your spinal erectors too on your posterior um, you would actually um, create this thinner waist look the superhero physique as some of you would actually refer to and it would actually promote the illusion of having a wider V taper in which also you should also prioritize your back muscles, your latissimus dorsi, your teres majoris, especially uh, when viewed at the side so you won't actually look very flat, uh, no pun intended. So yeah, prioritize your obliques, your serratus and of course your six pack I mean who wouldn't want um, puffy jack six pack especially on their especially on your cut and then uh, take progress pictures every now and then every actually I take that back every five kilo every five kilo drop that you do um, my goal again I've imitated and tweak a little bit of your uh, of Jeffrey Ver Verity Schofield's plan on his death cut as he would like to refer and his goal every every week I think was five kilograms because he is actually six four then he is uh, two hundred pounds 200 plus pounds I mean his stats uh, he was at 64 his height then he is at 200 plus pounds so I think it is reasonable reasonable for him to um, drop that huge amount of weight every week and I think this was much this was my mistake because on my first very first series cut because back then I was actually during the lockdown I actually planned on having to cut but I had a few setbacks and I never got into to got into it very seriously and what I would recommend to guys that would cut after a bulking face and I would recommend your bulking, bulking face to be more than six months per possibly at the minimum of a year so you're so you're bad your oh my god your body would have a lot of adjustments and a lot of time to absorb the surplus of calories that you are putting on your mouth and you sh you should be able to pack on more lean body mass compared to um, packing on just water weight and um, overall fat in general so that your bulk would not be to waste again this is from my personal perspective because again you cannot force your muscles to grow just because you're on caloric surplus um, what I would like you to do um, 
athletes at least two to three kilograms of uh, kilogram two to three kilograms worth of drop every week and then again take progress pictures um, ensure that you do you won't lose uh, size and symmetry every time you drop two to three kilograms and then in my case I actually um, try to drop five five kilograms I think every month because every week as you go deep on your cutting face you would actually tend to plateau but in that case um what I did was actually from the start so you would eat the same amount of food as you were on your uh, at the end of your bulking fix and then slowly and gradually um, decrease the amounts of carbs especially on days that you would actually lift and train at the gym and what I did was I actually have times that I would have a protein heavy meal and a carb heavy meal in which those days I actually uh, prioritize legs, my back um, and then the days where it is protein heavy it's mostly bro day, a bro day wherein I only prioritize my shoulders, my arms, forearms and my abs. Lastly, what actually the this would be the actually this last tip is what's actually the most very important because consistency consistency overall is what drives results and progress uh, in the gym so my very last important tip to you if you would be starting your cutting phase and you happen to stumble upon this video of mine is doing refeeds once a week to boost your morale and mental clarity what I mean by refeeding is once a week you would actually have your rest day so you won't have to experience diet fatigue by diet fatigue it means uh, you are so mentally drained that you would like to think that cutting if this cutting phase that you're doing is actually worth the results and it's kind of like a cheat meal or a cheat day in a way but in my again my personal experience I actually never gained that much weight after doing one f one refeed every once or er, once in every week that I did my cutting phase I mean I actually uh, did it at the same day that I would have my rest day so I would be lifting and training at the gym for six times a week six days a week and at the seventh day which is Sunday or in any other day that I would be able to go to the gym because I have some personal things that I would like to attend to like academics family or I would have to take the time off of the gym so in that rest day I would just eat anything that's put on the table in front of me or just having some of the sweets that guys would like to tell you to avoid during your cutting phase or when you are trying to lose weight and of course trying to restore some of your 
well-earned carbohydrates like carb or like rice, pastries, bread, pasta, whatsoever. That's what kept me going. That's what boosted my morale and my mental clarity throughout my four months of aggressive cutting phase. So that would be it. I mean, it took very long. I mean, my full guide is not that very long. I mean, you don't have to make everything in your fitness that complicated. I mean, if you're trying to lose weight, just train as hard as you can when you're at the bulk, but you are in a caloric deficit. And that would be the opposite in your bulking phase. Do your progressive overload and eat at a caloric surplus. So that would be it. Um, if you happen to find this video helpful, give it a like, subscribe if you haven't, comment down below if you find this video very informative and helpful and even share your experiences of your first time doing in your first time of doing your own cutting face your tips and tricks your full guides whatsoever that would be fine by me and as always thank you for watching and have a good day